I heard an analogy recently that I love. Mobility and flexibility training is hypertrophy for the length of the muscles, and strength and resistance training is hypertrophy for the width of the muscles. There's a massive focus on hypertrophy slash width building at the moment, so I know this might not be of interest to many of you. But mobility and flexibility training not only lengthens your muscles, it also serves as an injury prevention protocol maintains muscle mass, or in other words, prevents you from losing your hard-earned gains during less intense training periods, aids in recovery, and allows your body to function properly in more unorthodox activities that you might perform in the bedroom or other areas of the house. This routine I'm currently doing is a quick mobility routine that can be done daily and takes no longer than 20 minutes. The exercises range from very easy to more advanced, so either follow along, adapt them to your ability level if you have the knowledge to do so, or pick and choose the exercises that you are able to do and discard the exercises you are not yet able to perform. I'll talk you through the rest of the routine giving cues when necessary. However, it follows a dynamic flow structure and can be followed visually. So if you prefer, then crank some of your favorite tunes, pause the video as needed if I go too fast, and enjoy the multitude of short and long-term benefits you'll get from doing this routine. The exercise we performed at the start of the routine is downward dog. I like to start by stretching out the back of my legs by pushing my heels up and down. Make sure you do both sides. I do around five to 10 reps on each. We then swan dived into upward dog. Then I start working a bit of rotation by looking over the shoulders and dropping the opposite hip. Again, five to 10 reps. We then go into swan dives, transitioning from upward dog to downward dog dynamically. Swan dives are great for strengthening the shoulders and also getting a good stretch at the end of the movement. This builds strength in all positions of the movement. I like to look up at the top of the movement and get a good stretch through the neck as well. As this area often gets tight from hunching forward while looking at a screen for long periods of time and from being in the guarded position during my martial arts trainings. We then moved on to hyperextensions, which work on your core strength and mobility, an extremely important area as almost all movement patterns involve the core to varying degrees. After that, we moved on to cat cows, which also works core mobility, stretches out and strengthens the back and neck, and does the same for the scapula. The mobility exercise I am currently performing is thread the needle. This helps with core rotation mobility and really opens out the chest and shoulders at the top of the movement. Maintain a neutral position with the spine throughout the movement by gently bracing the core. Make sure to do both sides to prevent imbalances from occurring. Right now I'm performing neck rolls. The neck is an often neglected area in both mobility and resistance training, despite how important it is to have both a mobile and strong neck. This will help undo poor posture from spending long times in front of the screen and aid in circulation, which can help reduce and prevent headaches and migraines. Be gentle if you don't do much neck work, as you don't want to cause an injury, so start slow and build up to bigger circles when you're ready. This movement works on spinal and core rotation. Put your hands on your quad and use it to apply gentle leverage to rotate your core. Look over the opposite shoulder to incorporate some neck mobility and note that your rotation generally follows your reference point or in other words, where you're looking. By sitting like this, you're also getting a nice gentle stretch in your quads, ankles and tibialis, which is the small muscle that sits on the front of your calf. You might know in many of these exercises that one side or the other is more restricted. This is completely normal, as our dominant side generally accumulates more tension, as it is simply used for more general daily activities such as brushing your teeth. Implementing a mobility routine, such as the one I am showcasing now, is a great way to restore balance to the body and prevent this buildup of tension that can result in imbalances and eventually injuries. We'll never be perfectly balanced, but this doesn't make the pursuit any less important. This bridge regression acts as a warm up for the next exercise, back bridges. It's important to warm up for stronger mobility and flexibility exercises in the same way you would warm up for heavy lifts. Using easier regressions is a great way to reduce the risk of injury when performing harder progressions, as it directly involves the same muscle groups. Back bridges are one of my favorite exercises as they work the frontal plane of the body while also building shoulder and core strength. 
I find focusing on pushing my hands and feet into the ground in order to push the hips up gives me the best stretch. If you have the strength to do so, back bridge push-ups are an amazing way to build shoulder strength in a very unorthodox position. Back bridge push-ups are unique in that they are training strength, flexibility and mobility in unison. So in my books, it's a very high leverage exercise in terms of efficiency and practicality. Following this, gently roll out the spine by tucking your shins in towards your body and rocking in circles. Keep your legs tucked up and drop them toward one side of your body for a nice stretch in the hips and core. For a deeper stretch, straighten your legs. If you want to build strength in the position, gently hover your legs above the ground for added benefits. Do both sides to evenly work the body and prevent imbalances that can lead to injuries and dysfunction within the body. If you are new to mobility and flexibility training, you might find that your legs don't yet reach the ground. This is fine as the stretch should be gentle to allow your body to adjust and slowly adapt to being in new positions. If you stay consistent with the routine, you'll notice that gradually your legs get lower and lower to the ground until you are ultimately at the point where you can do the full range of motion. Spinal circles offer a range of benefits and should not be neglected in your mobility routine. Grab your legs to apply leverage and deepen the stretch into your torso. This exercise feels amazing after long periods of sitting and can even be done intermittently at your desk to prevent your lower back from seizing up and to keep the spine mobile. This is akin to working both sides evenly when doing unilateral body weight or weighted exercises. A tip I find helpful is working to your weaker side. If you hit failure at five repetitions on your non-dominant side, you should be able to match this on your dominant side with no issues. To finish off each of my mobility routines, I always like to end in a standing position and perform a circuit that we followed at the end of Muay Thai trainings in Thailand. This involves doing five repetitions of knee circles, both clockwise and anti-clockwise, followed by the same thing with hip circles, working your way gently up the torso to perform shoulder circles, and finally finishing with neck circles for a quick and holistic mobility routine. There are two more mobility routines that I use daily while traveling to keep my body functional and injury free. So make sure to stay tuned for those. I hope this was helpful to those of you who followed along. And as always, drop any comments, questions, or abuse down below. Cheers.